In today's video, I want to give you guys a rundown of how I trained our livestock guardian dog, Toby. Yeah, I love you, buddy, even if you are a dirt dog. It's hard to believe you've been here a whole year already. And I could not picture how we would have ever gotten by in this past year without him. That pup is now like an institution here on Goldshaw Farm. I wanna lay out some of the secrets that I've learned as I've been training Toby for a year and gotten him really good with all of our poultry, whether it's the ducks or the geese or the chickens. Hey Toby Dog, what's the first thing we always do every morning? Release the Kraken! <laughs> Hey, Brucey boy. And don't worry, guys, I'm going to give you a Bruce update really soon. But all I can say for right now is he's still in separation mode. Out you go, chickens. In 2019, we had a lot of predator problems. We were dealing with minks, we were dealing with coyotes, we were dealing with bobcats. Uh, uh, bobcat, you get out of here. And we actually ended up losing several ducks here on our farm, all of them due to predators. And so after losing so many birds, we decided to get a livestock guardian dog here on the farm. I did a ton of research on the different types of breeds that you could get. I looked at Great Pyrenees, I looked at Akbash, I looked at Antolian Sheepdog, and the one that made the most sense for me was the Marema Sheepdog. A buddy of mine who's got a sheep farm up here in Vermont has a couple of dogs and they're amazing. And it just so happened that his male dog sired a litter of puppies, and so I reached out to the breeder that he was working with and was able to reserve a Marema sheepdog. I really like the Maremas because above all other dogs that you could be potentially using as a livestock guardian dog, the Marema just seemed to be much more low key and chill. And given the fact that I was gonna have this dog work with poultry versus say goats or sheep, I needed to have a calmer dog that wouldn't get worked up by the fast movement of poultry and life on a poultry farm. And so that's where that big loot comes into play. Seriously though, if you guys are out there dealing with predator problems and you want to find a livestock guardian dog to do it, do your research. What works for me in my context here on a duck and goose farm in northern Vermont might not work if you are raising chickens in Texas, for example. That's not to say that a Marema might not work down there. My point is don't just listen to one dude off the internet and make all of your major life decisions. And that advice probably stands for pretty much everything on earth, not just which livestock guardian dog to go with. As I've gone through this process, I found that working with the right breeder was also really, really important. The, the folks that I work with who are actually about two and a half hours from here in Maine, just really great people. And they also happen to have a duck and sheep farm. And so the idea that the litter of puppies was gonna be raised with other ducks and, and be around other animals and be part of an integrated farm, that was really important to me too. And so as I was doing the research on which puppy to get, I was able to see exactly what the breeder setup was like. It was a farm context, not radically different than what we have here at Goldshaw Farm. I was able to meet the mother and spend time with the mother and see what her temperament was like. And she is a super sweet dog. And so to be able to understand what sort of setting your puppies are raised in, I think is really, really important. You know, when you're getting a dog for your farm, that is a long-term investment and I know that's gonna probably raise the question for a few of you well how much did you actually pay for Toby unfortunately I'm not allowed to say that on camera but what I can say is it was less than the price of a brand new iPhone now as Toby's been here on our farm and as you can see him now he's about 15 months old at this point and when you think about it right 
that's a pretty decent age, but technically he's still a puppy. Yet despite the fact that he's still a puppy, and he sometimes has that puppy energy, overall he's exceptionally chill and he's incredible with the poultry and I'm able to trust him out here 24 seven unsupervised. If you're getting a livestock guardian puppy, do not do that right out of the gate or you will fail and you will ruin the dog. Toby is the byproduct of a lot of hard work and a lot of training. Yes, he's got those livestock guardian instincts that play a really big role in how he behaves, but I've also worked with him quite a bit. You know, when he first came to the farm, I actually just kept him in that shed back there where I have the geese living now. And I actually lock him up at night so that he couldn't get attacked by like a bobcat or a coyote or something. And then during the day, I actually created a run for him that ran outside of the duck yard. So there used to be a fence that would go around the duck yard. And then I built another fence around the duck yard that was just like a place to keep Toby. And so during the day, Toby was around the ducks and geese and he could see them and get used to them, but he also couldn't have unsupervised access. When I'd come out and do my chores every morning and when I'd come out and do my chores every night and when I'd be around working on projects, I'd have Toby with me and I could watch his behavior very carefully. So for example, I would often stand like maybe 100 feet away and watch him in the duck yard with the ducks and geese and if he ever did anything wrong, I would absolutely correct his behavior. Now, I have never actually physically struck Toby, and I never will. I think that that's absolutely the wrong thing to do from a dog training perspective. I think it just breeds fear and insecurity in the dog, and actually maybe even makes the dog a little angry and resentful of you. But that said, I have scolded Toby on a number of occasions, and when I scold him, I use a pretty harsh voice. No! Hey, oh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, buddy, I'm sorry. Buddy, I didn't mean to scare you. Hey, I was just doing a demonstration for the video. I'm sorry, buddy. It's okay. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. What would happen is, as he was a much younger dog, especially in the first, say, three or four months he was on the farm, I would watch him very carefully with the ducks and the geese and the chickens. And if I saw him move towards them or show any sort of reaction to them or try to chase them or play with them, he would get reprimanded. And doing that over and over again, pretty quickly, he learned. And I think that consistency early on was an important part of his success. <laughs> hey, leave that GoPro alone, Goose. I also spent a bit of time working on some basic obedience commands with Toby. Not a lot of things, and I've never tried to teach him tricks like roll over or shake but making sure that he knows when to come and when to stop and, and not do something and when to sit and when to stay, all of those things are really important. And so I've taught him several basic commands just so that he's a good pup around the farm. But one fair warning about Maremmas, they are very independent dogs and even at this day and age, if there's something Toby really doesn't wanna do, he will be stubborn with me. But generally that stubbornness comes in the form of him standing like a statue and ignoring me. But again, he's still a puppy, so he's working on it. Other interesting behavior quirks that you might see with a Maremma is he will often bump into me or Allison and try to physically guide us. That's because he's just trying to direct things. You know, Maremmas were bred for thousands of years to be very independent dogs living up there in the mountains with the sheep. And so that directorial bossiness and that independence is a core characteristic of their breed. The other thing you should know is if you get a livestock guardian dog and it's your first time, don't expect it to be like other dogs. Don't expect it to like play fetch with you. But that's not to say that Toby is cold and aloof. He loves good petting. He loves to be scratched. He likes it when I brush him and groom him. He's a very affectionate and loving dog. His job isn't to like fight animals. His job is to keep watch of things. And he's got that loud booming bark. <laughs> What he's really doing with his presence here is he's like claimed this entire farm as his dominion. Like you can even see him, right? Look at it, look at the behavior he's doing right now. He's sniffing in the air. He's looking around. He's watching for anything unusual. He's watching his birds. I mean, it's pretty incredible to see him in action. When you watch him at night, it's like he's a totally different dog too because when he's at night, he's on high, high alert. Like any sort of movement or any sort of noise, he's barking it off and trying to scare it away. You know, as I've watched over the last 12 months, you know, the signs of having coyotes or bobcats or mink or raccoons, like within, gosh, a couple thousand yards of the actual farmyard have just completely diminished. The closest I've seen has been like 
expect signs of coyote scat a few thousand yards away. We've built this entire, essentially, habitat here on our farm where we are raising ducks and geese and chickens, and we'll probably add a few other animals in the mix very soon. There's a perimeter fence that keeps some of the predator pressure away, but then really after that, the security is entirely left up to Toby. As far as training Toby to the other birds, I would say that the ducks were very easy to train. You know, the ducks are relatively skittish, and so they gave Toby plenty of space, and he gave them a plenty of space, and that worked out really well. The chickens were a little bit trickier. I think it was because I got the chickens when they were chicks, and they've always seen Toby around here on the farm. They don't really have a fear of him, and so they will sometimes try to, like, get into spaces with him and, like, get into his food. But because Toby's such a gentle animal, and because he's well-trained, he doesn't ever attack them. He might, like, brush them away to get them away from eating in his food dish. But generally speaking, it's not a problem. The hardest animal to train Toby to was the geese by far, because the geese are aggressive. Especially last spring when Toby was like five or six months old, you know, the geese were in their mating season and that's when the ganders were aggressive. And so Justin Finch Fletchley, our lead gander here on the farm, would chase and nip at Toby all the time. As a livestock guardian dog, you don't want him showing any aggression towards your birds. And so it's not like he can fight back at all. And although I worked really hard to get him comfortable with those geese, in those early days, he was terrified of the geese. But the good news is, as Toby's gotten older and, and sort of more established here on the farm, and he's definitely the alpha animal here on the farm, well, maybe number two behind Pablo, he's gotten much more comfortable with establishing his presence where he's making himself feel felt but he's also not being aggressive towards the birds you know i've observed it over and over and over again where for example the geese might get aggressive with toby and he's willing to look the other way but at the same time he doesn't let them walk all over him now another difference between livestock guardian dogs and say a house dog is Toby lives outdoors 24 seven. Now some people might have a hard time accepting that, especially here in the frigid north of Vermont, but it's actually what he was bred to do. Toby's got, come here Toby, and you show everybody. Toby's got this special coat, if you can see it here. It's his winter coat's actually come in already. It's like a double layer. So there's a layer of fur underneath this layer of fur. That double layer coat actually keeps him very, very dry and very, very warm. In fact, for Toby, it's actually hard to keep him like sheltered. Even on a day like this where it's like 32 degrees and it's been rainy. Hey, Toby dog. How are you doing, buddy boy? Good morning, pal. Hi. You sleeping under your house again? You know, you have a perfectly good dog house right over there. You want to get all muddy. He spent most of the night clearly outside, rolling around in the mud, sleeping in the mud, just being a dirty, dirty dog. That's because he likes being out here in the elements. He doesn't ever go inside our house. I know sometimes people ask about that. And that's just because I don't want to send mixed signals to him. You know, really, he's a farm dog. This farm is his terrain. If I'm bringing him into the house and treating him like a house pet, he's going to turn into a house pet. Some people with livestock guardian dogs don't expect them to bark so much. But honestly, if you want a livestock guardian dog, you should know that that's what you're getting into. They bark all the time. It's not like an annoying bark, and Toby doesn't actually bark all that much during the day. But at night, any sort of twig that snaps or any sort of random animal that's walking through the forest over there, he's out there barking at it, but that's a big part of his job, and so you can't get mad at him for it. If you live in like a suburban area and you have like lots of close neighbors, I'd advise against potentially getting a livestock guardian dog just because of that barking issue. You need to be okay with the barking if you're going to have a livestock guardian dog. All in all, I couldn't picture life on our farm these days without Toby. He's been an incredible addition and I feel really lucky to have him. Yes, you are such a good pup. So if you were to ask me, I think getting a livestock guardian dog is a great decision. If you guys want to see more of Toby's exploits, I'm leaving this playlist right over here. Be sure to check it out and watch some of those videos. Thank you for watching and I will see you over in that playlist. Thanks guys.